Hello friends, uh, today's lecture uh, would be on Anton Chekhov's short story, The Bride. And uh, this particular discussion is a part of the series that we have begun uh, of late. And uh, this is the first lecture, uh, so far as I'm concerned, uh, taking up a short story text. The first lecture was on the form of the short story, uh, where we distinguished uh, between uh, the uh, short story and novel and other genres in literature. So uh, <clears throat> it's, a, it's, a, it's a first lecture on, let's say, a uh, short story text. Anton Chekhov, all of you have heard his name. He's a major playwright uh, from Russia and also uh, one of the most major uh, short story writers in the world. He is known for his uh, short stories and uh, people have in fact uh, uh, made a model out of him. They, they, they follow his method, they follow his technique, they, they, they follow his characterization, they follow his approach to uh, short story as a form as well as, uh, as, as, as something uh, that is to do with the social reality of one's time. So uh, <coughs> Anton Chekhov then is a uh, legend. Uh, he was born uh, <coughs> in Russia in the 19th century. I will come to that a little later, but first a few uh, important uh, general points about him. So as I have said, he is a short story writer and playwright. Uh, earlier we discussed him as a playwright also. He grew up with the generation of writers such as Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, Gogol, Pushkin and Turgenev. And uh, you know that these are uh, all time greats of uh, uh, Russian uh, fiction in the 19th century. And uh, if he's considered as one of them, and uh, he uh, was their contemporary, he learned from them, and they also would have all read him and uh, told him about uh, their impressions of his writing. So that way, uh, in, in, a, in a great creative company uh, was Chekhov placed uh, in, in his life. And uh, well, one more thing, that uh, he was uh, a medical doctor by profession. Now, uh, there, there may be some connection between uh, somebody being a doctor, a uh, medical doctor, as well as a writer. And uh, that uh, link between the writer and the doctor is that the doctor comes in touch with, uh, comes in contact with a large number of people. All of them have a history of their own, all the patients. He, he goes into the uh, personal, you know, uh, aspects of uh, the patient and uh, observes the, the, the patient very closely and in fact has to diagnose and when you diagnose, you have to know the ins and outs of the life of the person whom you are treating. So uh, that kind of training about a close uh, understanding of character uh, would have come to Chekhov uh, from his profession. And uh, but what about his writing? Uh, writing was not his profession. And therefore, he made a famous statement uh, and we uh, refer to him. Uh, as, as, as a, a very fine, you know, uh, insightful as well as witty writer. He said that he was a medical doctor by profession. So uh, he got his bread and butter uh, from, from uh, you know, medicine. And uh, that way the, the medical profession was his wife. And then he said, so far as writing is concerned, that was his mistress. Now you see the difference between the wife and the mistress. A wife uh, has to play a role and uh, is predictable. But the mistress uh, always, you know, plays pranks with the lover, uh, with, with, with the person you know, who is in love with her, and uh, she has her own moods. And uh, see the rich connotations of uh, the mistress. It's a tongue-in-cheek kind of uh, statement. Uh, see the, uh, you know, the writing uh, appearing uh, before one's eyes in one's mind, and then disappearing, and uh, play, playing tricks with the author. Sometimes it is caught, it is captured. On other occasions, uh, the writer fails to uh, capture the whole of uh, the, the, the story and uh, the kind of playfulness that is involved in uh, the uh, contact between the writer and the writing that is suggested quite well by Chekhov in this particular statement. But then uh, the background is rich. Uh, then as, uh, his profession is uh, to, to recognize people from their, from their ailments. That also is important. And thirdly, that uh, he uh, plays with the themes, the questions, the characters, the, the, the surroundings in such a manner as if he is, uh, you know, being in touch with a demanding a kind of a person called a mistress. So uh, these things uh, 
actually reflect very richly uh, on his preoccupation as a writer and uh, we will we'll see that happening uh, when we discuss uh, the, the, the short stories, particularly the one that is uh, for us to consider that is The Bride. Chekhov was known for works such as The Sea Gull, Three Sisters and The Cherry Orchard. Uh, Cherry Orchard, there was a lecture on it uh, when, when uh, the writer was uh, introduced as a playwright. Uh, so he is known for, the, for his, for his uh, uh, you know, uh, writings uh, of plays. He wrote 201 short stories, which is a large number. And uh, uh, I'll come, I'll, I'll tell you later that he didn't live long. So uh, in his short, uh, you know, career, writing 201 short stories is really remarkable. Um, I was just, uh, you know, going through uh, a few short stories, and I saw in my own personal library five volumes of short stories uh, uh, by Chekhov and uh, you know uh, it's not a uh, easy thing to uh, you know write so much uh, in, in such a short period so these uh, short stories bordered on journalistic portrayals and sketches that is to be kept in mind uh, he doesn't seem to be very serious when he writes uh, his short stories because he must have written them for journals at that point of time and uh, there you are chatty so maybe he is uh, a bit chatty, his, his sentences are not long, his sentences always provoke the, the, the reader to think and sketches, sketches means that he is capturing also the pictures of the characters that he picks up for representation. He was considered a writer of realism. Now this is important, if the pulse of the time is there with the writer, uh, then the writer is supposed to. Uh, make a comment on uh, the happenings of the day and uh, that, you know, uh, compulsorily makes the writer a realist. Who is a realist? That's a long, there is a long debate about uh, realism in uh, literary criticism. I will not go into that. But here, uh, for the purpose of uh, elaborating his uh, attitude towards life, uh, I would say that realism is a good description because he sees what is in front of him he comments about it. He sometimes criticizes it also, very subtly. He is not one, uh, you know, who would be judging things for their being right or wrong, judging human beings for committing a right, uh, you know, thing or or or, or, or a mistake uh, or some some kind of an error. He will just appreciate, just uh, represent the character as he saw it, as the character left an impression uh, on him as a writer, and since. He is talking about the actual people that he sees comes across and those actual people ha carry in them their, their, their own background, therefore he is bound to be a realist. But no, uh, there is one thing more, that when you read uh, uh, Chekhov and uh, his stories and uh, you see the descriptions uh, as well as the portrayals of the characters, then you realize that there are certain questions that he is posing to us. And those questions relate to the predicament of the uh, characters as well as the conditions in which those characters act or live. And therefore, if the conditions are there, which are actual, and if the, the character is there in front of us, and the writer is commenting on their conduct, on their behavior, then he has to be a realist. And uh, the realist also is one who uh, looks at reality not as a constant. Reality in life is never constant. What happened, uh, you know, 10 years ago may not happen in the same way today as well because uh, in the meantime things have changed. So it's very difficult for uh, 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 society uh, to be, uh, in fact, it's, uh, it's impossible for a society to, to remain static. And if society is all the time changing, then reality also changes. And uh, changing reality is a, a once again a very slippery kind of a context. But if the writer is able to handle the changing reality, then one is supposed to be a realist. Now I'll also open here the dimension of the reader, because reader also is a part of reality, and reader also is all the time, without without stop, changing, uh, without without stop, uh, judging, without stop learning from, 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 from writing, therefore, writer as a realist, the reader as a realist, and there is a society that is also changing. Now, this uh, creates a combination 
of great relish as well as uh, dynamism. Now, I will just uh, tell a few general things, all of them uh, very directly uh, reflect upon the uh, particular story that we have picked up for discussion. Sensitivity is one, uh, you know, he, he, uh, he is very sensitive, sensitive in so many different ways. He understands the surface, he also understands the background of the surface and uh, he uh, takes care to not, uh, you know, uh, uh, judge, not to tell, not to scold anyone. Uh, he, he, he understands and he sympathetically views things and therefore he, he remains, you see when he has to criticize, he will not criticize. Being, being a sensitive person, he will give a pause, he, he, he might, you know, give, uh, create a kind of a laughter, he, he, might, he might, you know, uh, leave a smile on your face when he talks about somebody because he does not want to hurt that person whom he is talking about. So that is called sensitivity. If somebody is making a mistake, you can do two things. One is that you can castigate the person, criticize the person, condemn that person and the second is that you can say, okay, the person made a mistake but then next time I am sure he is not going to repeat the mistake and then you smile. If you do that, then you are a sensitive person and uh, when you read uh, 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 Chekhov, then every, every time uh, there, there is a detail, there is an insight, then you know that you are in touch with a sensitive mind. That is the hallmark of uh, uh, Chekhov's writings uh, generally and, and, and particularly in short fiction. Precision. Now, precision is something that is to do with language. So, uh, no, you know, long uh, uh, introductions, no, no long harangues or, or, or uh, lectures. Uh, precision is that you uh, use a word, you use a sentence, the sentence is short and uh, the sentence is talking only about the things that are there, uh, you know, inherent in the language that he uses. That is precision and uh, he is a master of precision. Uh, when a whole paragraph can be written, he can squeeze the essence of the paragraph in a word and uh, therefore that word becomes uh, pregnant with a large number of possibilities and uh, the reader starts thinking as to what exactly uh, the writer meant. Irony. Irony uh, is always something uh, which, which is both serious and non-serious. You read the serious thing and you know that there is a joke behind it and uh, you, you, you approve of something and then you know that approving is not easy and therefore once again you, you create a situation in which the reader will be amused, that is called irony. Subtlety uh, is, is more or less the same thing, uh, things are hidden but they are also uh, revealing and uh, uh, the, the interplay between uh, hiding and revealing is, 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 uh, is, is called subtlety and deceptive simplicity. What is that? He appears to be saying something very simple, but then he is not actually saying something simple. So it is deceptive. Uh, it appears to be simple, but it is profound. Uh, this, this, uh, that there can be um, uh, examples of this in his short stories. Uh, somebody is happy, but then his happiness is shallow, uh, or her happiness is shallow, and uh, which means that uh, the person is called happy, but it is not simply to be taken as, as, as the final truth. These are the recognized traits of his fiction, sensitivity, precision, irony, subtlety and deceptive simplicity. So uh, you are uh, actually in for, when you read uh, uh, Chekhov, you are in for uh, being amused, uh, being, being interested, uh, being you know insightful yourself and you will be hugely entertained by the writer when you read his short stories. So these are the traits, he would seldom make a statement or describe a phenomena. This I have already discussed. <coughs> Instead, he would share insights with the readers. He will tell the readers, okay, this is what I think, making them a part of his evolving thoughts. This is slightly difficult for us to understand, so let me explain. Uh, when you read a short story, it is not that uh, the, the person, the writer has uh, already decided what to say. That is not the case. The writer decides at every moment the, the sentences are, you know, uh, read by the, the reader. So you, ha you read a sentence and a thought comes, then read the next sentence and uh, the thought uh, gets enriched by the next sentence. The, the third sentence and uh, maybe you can see some changes now uh, in, in the thoughts. The fourth sentence 
and uh, the thought has become full, but at the same time yet is incomplete. He was a visionary in the true sense of the word, because a visionary is one who always uh, keeps an eye on a general truth, uh, which is outside the uh, pale of, outside the boundaries of the short story, and there is a vision. That vision always tells the writer that human life is really great, it, it is excellent, uh, it, 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 it is worth living, and that maybe uh, the, the present has some sense of failure, but the future is going to be bright. And uh, the writer uh, generally uh, keeps that possibility of brightness uh, in his imagination, and he has to give that final message. message. So, uh, the reality for uh, such a writer as, 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 as uh, uh, this, this one is not just there in front of you. It's, it's, a, it's a writing that is a part of a larger phenomena in society. So, if there is a simple person, there are, there are so many simple people in the world around you, around the writer, and those simple people are going to enjoy things in their own collective way, and that vision of those people being together and enjoying life fully. Now, this is a dream and this dream is in the background of his writing. That is called a visionary in the true sense of the word. With a consciousness that would go parallel to the humdrum of the life around him. So, one, one thing is, one level is the, the uh, uh, account that is there in front of us in the form of words and there is another thing which is in the form of a dream around those words which are used in the short story, but that dream continues and that dream become, becomes big uh, with the passage of time and therefore you say, okay, this was the vision, this was the general idea that, the, that, that prompted the writer to, to uh, write this particular story. So, uh, once again I tell you, uh, remind you that I am talking about uh, the bride uh, in, in, in general terms and as soon as the, uh, the uh, writing is unfolded uh, before us, you will understand that all these things were uh, in the context of uh, the bride that, that we are going to discuss. The short story, The Bride, was written in 1903. How many years before? 100, 120 years before today. And uh, you know, the, the whole century passed and uh, uh, today is the, the, a part of the 120 years and there, and there are 20 more years, 23 years in fact of the present century we are there and if you read the story you still find so very fresh existing uh, in the reality of our own time. It was written in 1903. It was also translated under the title The Betrothed. So there is a bride and there is a, bit, there is a betrothed person, betrothed, engaged. So engagement happened. And uh, in, in that sense, the, right, the character was not just, just the bride, she was the bride-to-be. She would become a bride. She, she had, uh, you know, uh, gone on that path and she had uh, been engaged to a person and uh, that is what it was in reality. But see the irony, uh, she, she is called a bride even though she may not have actually married the person. So, the, see the double meaning that is there. In, in, in one uh, uh, translation, she is called a bride. In the other translation, she is called betrothed. It's, a, it's centered on a young woman. Now, uh, I'm, I'm taking up the story, living in a small town, and her name is Nadia, who confronts the problematic issue of marriage. A young woman, that's one aspect. She is 23 years old. And living in a small town is another because uh, she has uh, boundaries which are narrow. Uh, she, she has a neighborhood, she has a, a house, she has characters there. They actually determine her uh, condition, they, they determine her fate. If she is married then these people must have instilled the idea of marriage into her head uh, right from the time uh, she became a young person uh, going from adolescence onwards. And when she is 23, she is engaged. But then uh, the, the engagement has happened, the woman has lived in the uh, small town to which she belongs. Her name is Nadia, a simple name, who confronts the problematic issue of marriage. Is marriage problematic? In the, in the early uh, 20th century, in the, in the last part of the 19th century, yes, it's problematic. It, it's a different phase of her life. 
uh, the freedom of the, the home of the woman uh, is, is going to be taken away and she has to join uh, another set of people uh, with whom she would live all, all the rest of her life and uh, there is a problematic aspect to it. Will she be able to adjust? Will she be able to enjoy harmony? Will she continue with her happiness? All these things are in the grey area. The, the woman does not know. Nobody knows in fact. The, the, the parents of the girl also do not know that the girl is going to make a grade and that she is going to be happy in the new circumstance of married life. So that is the problematic issue. All women, you know, are all the time uh, anxious. Uh, they, they, they have a sense of anxiety about the future because after marriage their life changes. Is that true today in the, in the 21st century? Ask any young woman and, and every young woman without exception would be uh, anxiety ridden uh, about the future uh, th th that might unfold to her uh, in, in, in the case of marriage. So uh, it, it was problematic in the 19th and 20th centuries, it is problematic today and therefore uh, those who read the story uh, read it from this angle that marriage is a problematic thing and that in fact marriage is not just love between two individuals, uh, love is actually an institution, it has its own laws, it has its own, own, own reality, it has its own bindings, it has its own preconditions and unless you follow them you, it can't be a uh, uh, successful marriage. So problematic has all those aspects in it and uh, in, in this case because the woman did not marry therefore she was betrothed but she never married which means that there is a problematic issue. Initially she was in love with a man and mark the word initially and had concrete plans to marry him uh, uh, when she was young, when she was adolescent, then she liked a person and she wanted to marry him, then she grew up and then she was engaged to, to marry this person. Later she comes to face certain doubts about marrying, the doubts are there, should she marry or should she remain single? What will, well, what will she do if she remains single? Is, is, is there some work that is outside chalked out for her uh, that, that she can do and uh, instead of marrying she can live a different kind of life. This is uh, you know, the crux of the matter of a young woman because uh, the, the young woman does not know whether marrying is going to give the kind of uh, you know, freedom, the kind of happiness, the kind of you know, uh, intimacy. Uh, that she has been looking for in life all this time and also to an extent enjoying in the company of her parents whether that should continue or not continue is in the domain of uh, future. The doubts are of the existential kind. Now this word is slightly heavy, uh, let me explain this. Existential kind which means that they, they happen internally in your mind. Uh, you, you always relate you know, uh, problems with your life. How will your life be shaped by certain things? So this uh, existentialist uh, kind of uh, you know situation, where you are not sure whether you will succeed or fail, whether you will be the same person or will you become a different person, whether you will suffer or enjoy, uh, whether you want it or not want it. All these things you know uh, are, are are there in the existentialist phase. In fact, I use this word also, uh, you know, being conscious about. Uh, existentialism being a phase of literature in the 20th century. People till the 19th century, they, they were bound by uh, certain orthodox values and ideas, but come the 20th century and uh, the domain of freedom was, was, was there and uh, women started thinking about the, the essence of marriage and, 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 and the kind of shape that it might take in one's life. So therefore it became an existential uh, trend you know, in the 20th century and marriage seemed to be almost at the center of uh, concerns and uh, anxieties of the individuals. The thematic aspects in the, of this short story relate to education on one side and stability in the life of marriage in a provincial town on the other. Should a woman be educated? Today it is a settled thing that a woman re requires education and education means knowledge. Education does not mean simply uh, you know, uh, sitting uh, doing an exam. And, and successfully completing it, uh, education means that uh, you should be able to theorize, you should be able to think independently, you should uh, first be literate and uh, with literacy 
uh, you, you might, you know, uh, read books, you might come in touch with uh, the thoughtful people, the people who think, and uh, you can, uh, you know, uh, enter the uh, field of, uh, you know, uh, discussion, and that discussion actually can give you fruits of what can be called education. So stability in the life of marriage in a provincial town, uh, this has its own problems, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, so far as the third world is concerned, of which we are a part, uh, education still seems to be a major issue, particularly for women. Should they get education? If they get education, should they do a job? If they do a job, should they think about their marriage as, as, as something problematic? Now, all these issues are still alive uh, with us, and therefore, education is deeply tied up with the idea of living your life on your own terms, inside or outside marriage. So these are the issues, and uh, the issues have already been, uh, you know, laid bare before us. And uh, we know that uh, this this uh, short story is about a young woman, and whether she will be able to sort out her problems or not, that we will see in the uh, coming discussion uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, that, you know, will begin uh, with this particular insight. Thank you.